Hello, welcome to Jar to Table. Inspirational meal ideas for under 15 minutes for those of us that have stored our foods through dehydration, canning and etc. So today um, I realised I'd only got three potatoes and I didn't want to do any uh, pasta or rice because the kids have kind of had enough of that. So I thought, right, OK, um, we're going to slice these up and uh, put everything in an oven proof dish. Now obviously, oops, obviously you can do this in um, a slow cooker, but anyway, I'm just deciding to do it this way. So we're emptying out the canned beef, and there's quite a lot of it, and loads of lovely fat. And on top of that, I've got some mixed root, canned mixed root, uh, vegetables which is parsnip, swede and carrot and I thought because I've got not a lot of potatoes um, it's got to be heavy on meat to really fill me and my kids up. Next off because I want it to be these dried onions to be close to the water, the gravy I'm going to add them next. Um, then, look, my beautiful mixed roots. Love. Oh, this thing of beauty. I'm going to keep the liquid, but I'm going to put it in the pan where the gravy is going to go and just put that on top. Now, seeing that, I'd better cut up that parsnip because it's really big. Um, I had, um, I was dehydrating some uh, vacuum sealing, rather, some uh, peas, and um, I had a few left, and that's kind of what inspired me because I love peas with um, mince. So, make sure they're in that bit and the gravy is heating up so that's great um what else should i put in let's put in the salt and let's put the salt in no we're going to put the salt in the gravy just a bit because it's himalayan sea salt it's all good for you and a bit of the onion powder as well I quite like strong onion and garlic. So let's put some of that in as well. Um, the reason I'm putting this in in the gravy, let's put a bit more, rather than just put it on top is because I want it to really work through. And when I do a beef gravy, I always add one chicken stock cube. I'm just using these at the moment, the granules, because it thickens as well, and I'm feeling lazy. But yeah, okay, that's about it. Um, then I'm going to boil that down. Now, the next thing, thinking about it, I just had a thought. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I actually want to use my uh, beef bone broth. And I've already done quite a bit of liquid here, so that's fine. I can recover this. Let's save half of this gravy. I'll put it in the fridge for another day. lovely and thick so but I'll put this in now and let's see how much it thickens by now while that's doing where's my knife I'm gonna cut up these I want them quite 
thin. You know, it's funny, isn't it? When you use mashed potato, you need double the amount of potatoes, but when you're just cutting them up thinly, you use far less. So when I uh, haven't got a lot of potatoes, this is kind of the meal go-to option. Now, you can make it pretty or however you want. I'm just going to put it in like that. The oven's already nicely heating. And it will be in. So however long it's taken me to do this is however you know because I think it's going to be in the oven I'd put it in for a good hour and if you've got a um, glass top to this which I don't have anymore I think it's broken somewhere at some point um, I'd have that on because I want the potatoes to definitely cook because I'm going to cover this in melted butter but I want to make sure the potatoes are cooked and then for the last half an hour uh, I will um, take the foil off or the cover that you have uh, and then um, let it brown now to be honest if you do thicker slices like I'm tending to do then keep it in the oven for a bit longer that's all that you have to do and that has made what would have been possibly a smaller meal into a bigger meal flatten it all down that looks fairly pretty doesn't it I'm going to put the um, melted butter on top going to need a bit more thickening up. Let's get some corn flour out. A tablespoon might be good and a bit of water my dad always used to say to me don't add too much water it should be like paste but then you have to whisk like anything to incorporate it or do it watery and then you're not in such a rush Oh, that's really good gravy. So that would be good gravy for another day. And that will continue to thicken. I don't want it too thick because otherwise the potatoes won't uh, absorb the water. So, yeah, it's quite thick at the moment. I've got black pepper and white pepper but I'm going to put in white pepper you can put herbs in but this is a British meal and um, it's comfort food and you've got all the benefits of having a little bit of liver in the bone broth go see my video I'll put it up at the end on how to do really excellent bone broth so I'm going to pour that over some people don't but I much prefer having it over before laying uh, after laying the potatoes
I'm going to wait till it's covered because remember it's got to seep in and it's going to take a while and you see the bubbles are going because it's got to sink in so I think that's that'll be good see all the bubbles popping so it's slowly going to be sinking in okay and now I'm going to put some melted butter and drizzle that on top and now into the oven oh, one little handy tip I don't put it flat with the foil I have it so it's sticking up it's either that or put a bit of lard smear a bit of lard uh, onto the underside of the foil because the potatoes will honestly stick and then it's all ruined so that's good all sticking up and now into the oven and I'm putting that at six and setting it for I'm going to do because it's quite a large one I'm going to set it for about 40 minutes but I will be adding at least half an hour after that well I've just taken it out I left it in the oven longer than I intended to but um, it's all good for me because uh, I like it caramelized and these potatoes were about too deep so that's fine but uh, yeah can't wait.